Hi everyone, it's Miss Ig. I'm here, I'm sitting in my home, thinking about my amazing students and how much I miss them, and I decided to do a little reading lesson for you guys. So I hope you like it. I even have all the components. Bear with me, adults. I know you probably, if you don't know me, I'm very weird. So first we have our objective. I have terrible handwriting. It says, I can identify the character's setting, problem, and solution of a story by using the illustrations and details. If you're trying to work with your kids on their reading, it's really good to always have that objective up and ready. Um, I'm not going to break it down to the T right now. Sorry, Mr. Conway. But here it is, right there, ready for you guys. So now I'm going to read one of my favorite books. And as I read, I'm going to identify the characters, the setting, the problem, and solution. Hmm, what are characters, pro uh, setting, problem, solution? Well, the characters are the people and animals in the story. I drew a lecture, but I'm putting it far away so you don't have to see it. The setting is where and when the story takes place. The problem is what goes wrong in the story. And the solution is how the character solves the problem. So, like my little chalkboard back here. I'm going to read to you Where the Wild Things Are. And this is a really great book to read. And if you have it at home, I will highly suggest you reading it. And also, if you have the movie, you can watch the movie and then you can compare and contrast them. And maybe I'll give out the book to someone that does a little extra credit and comparing and contrasting them. Send me a little paragraph. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Where the Wild Things Are. Throwing Pictures by Maurice Sendak. <sighs> that the night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief. What made mischief of one kind? Mischief. What do you think mischief means? And another. His mother called him a wild thing. And Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. Oh, no, no, no. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. And did a forest really grow? No. He's using his imagination. And grew. Hmm, I definitely know a character in the book, maybe two characters so far in the book, too. And grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. Now close your eyes and picture that. Picture you're in your room and then your ceilings, vines start falling from your ceiling and your walls become the world all around you and you're all of a sudden outside. What would you do? And an ocean tumbled with a private boat for Max, and he sailed through night and day. And in and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are. We met some more characters. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars, and gnashed their terrible teeth, and rolled their terrible eyes. And showed their terrible claws. That might be a problem. So Max said, be still. And tamed them with a magic trick. Oh my goodness. Of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the world's most <coughs> wildest thing of all. I once took an art class and we had to draw this picture. We had to use different materials. That would be a fun thing to do at home. And they made him king of all the wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. And they're dancing and they're partying. Go ahead, show, show your parents your best dance moves right now. I won't dance. My students will yell at me if I try. 
the hanging from vines. They're partying all around. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all the wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. I think that might be our main problem. I wonder how he's going to solve the problem. Then all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, oh, please don't go. We'll, we'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. And into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. The end. So in this story, what do you, who do you think the characters were? We know Max was one, all the wild things, and his mom. The setting, where did this story take place? Well, at first it took place in his bedroom. Then it took place in his imagination where he went to the forest all around. What was the problem? Well, the first problem of the story was what? He went to bed without his supper. There was lots of other little problems, but that was the main problem. So he went to bed without his dinner, and how did he solve his problem? Did he do his time out, and then his mom said, oh, you know what? Here you go, buddy. You deserve it. So at home, you can solve this on your own, and then I really encourage you to watch the movie Where the Wild Things Are, and then if you would like to... Write a little paragraph comparing and contrasting the two about the book and the movie. And then if you email it to me, maybe I'll send you the book as a prize. So until I, I hope to see a lot of emails coming my way. Stay safe. Keep in touch. Love you all. And have a good day. Bye.